Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a drama film called Room. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. 24-year-old Joy lives in a tiny room with her son Jack. The room has a toilet and bath in one corner and a makeshift kitchen in the other. The mother and son share a single bed because of the limited space. It has only a skylight that works as a window and the door needs a passcode to be opened. Jack has never in his life been outside of the room. His mother Joy was abducted by a man seven years ago who has been holding her captive in the same room ever since. Jack is the result of the sexual abuse Joy had to go through because of the abductor. The only form of entertainment the kid has is an old TV which he thinks is a magic box. He believes that people inside the TV are aliens who live on another planet with trees and animals. The film begins with Jack waking up and saying hi to the inanimate objects around the room, like the chair, the wardrobe, the sink, and so on. Since he has only seen two people in his life, he has made friends with the objects around the room. The kid has no concept of space and thinks that the room is all that exists. To avoid explaining the harsh truth of his life, Joy has never told him about the outside world. The two have named the abductor Old Nick. He comes to Joy every night and assaults her sexually. After seven years of torture, she has gotten used to it. He also brings them necessary groceries and buys them clothes once in a while. Jack is excited because today is his fifth birthday. His mother makes him a cake with whatever materials they have. Jack is stoked about getting something he has only ever seen on TV, but is disappointed to see the cake has no candles. He demands that Joy should have asked Old Nick for candles for their Sunday treat. Joy claims that she can only ask him for necessary goods. When it turns dark, she makes Jack sleep inside a tiny cupboard as usual. She does this so the kid won't have to witness Old Nick assaulting her. When the abductor enters the room, Jack watches him through the slats of the cupboard. He is terrified of going out because he can tell the man hurts his mother. The following day, as Joy is eating breakfast, a bad tooth falls out of her mouth. She hands it to her son, who keeps it in his mouth. Ew. They have breakfast, which is only a piece of toast. The kid wishes to eat something else, but Joy doesn't respond, knowing that this is all she can provide him. When Jack wakes up the next morning, he is overjoyed to see a brand new toy car on the table. Old Nick has brought it for him as a present for his birthday. Jack believes that Old Nick is a magician who can bring stuff out of the TV. He plays with the car for the entire day around the room. For an hour or so, the two scream at the ceiling, hoping to catch someone's attention. But as usual, nothing happens. Later, while talking, Jack mentions his imaginary pet dog, Lucky. Joy tells him that Lucky isn't real, making him upset. When Joy is distracted, Jack sees a mouse on the floor for the first time in his life. He tries to touch it, but Joy notices and chases it away. He is sad because the mouse was the only animal he has ever seen. That night, while making dinner, Joy accidentally leaves the toaster oven on and it catches fire. She quickly turns it off and tries to wave off the smell, hoping old Nick won't notice. However, when he comes around at night, he smells the burnt cheese instantly. He gets annoyed and calls her names. When she snaps back with a snarky comment, he gets violently angry and almost hits her. It turns out he was laid off from work six months ago and can hardly provide for the three of them. Poor Jack tries to ignore the conversation but accidentally makes a noise. Old Nick notices and tries to open the cupboard to see him. To keep him from talking to her son, Joy invites him to the bed. Later that night, Jack sneaks out of his cupboard and tiptoes over to the two of them. Old Nick happens to be awake and sees the kid. He lunges for Jack, but Joy throws herself on top of him, preventing him from touching her son. An enraged Nick threatens to kill her and storms off, leaving a crying Jack behind. Joy consoles him as he sobs in her arms and apologizes for coming out of the cupboard. The next morning, the room is suspiciously cold. Joy notices that their heater is turned off, which means Old Nick must have cut off the power supply to the shed. Joy knows that they cannot survive in the cold for long. Moreover, with the shortage of money, she is afraid Nick will starve them to death. So, she sits Jack down and explains to him that they are being held in a shed by a bad person. She tells him that she was only 17 when Old Nick asked her to help him with his sick dog. He fooled her and kidnapped her in the shed. 
Before that, she used to live with Jack's grandparents in a house that had a hammock. The kid refuses to believe her and declares that trees, houses, and hammocks only exist on TV. Although Jack is stubborn, Joy keeps on telling him things about the outside world. She even shows him a dried leaf that has fallen on the skylight. But the kid insists the leaves are green, so she must be lying. The next day, while watching TV, he asks her if trees and people are real. Joy calmly explains to him how the real world works, finally making him believe her. Not wasting much time, she devises a plan to escape. She boils water and uses it to make it look like Jack has a fever. She even forces herself to vomit and spreads it around the pillow to make him smell bad. The kid cries and claims he doesn't want to do it. Joy doesn't enjoy seeing him crying, but she has no other way to escape. When old Nick arrives that night, she tells him that the cold has made Jack sick. Nick touches his forehead, which is burning because of the hot water. He claims that he will bring antibiotics tomorrow and leaves. Joy is disappointed because she had thought he would take Jack to the hospital, where the kid would have a chance to escape. The following day, she thinks of a new plan. She asks Jack to pretend to be dead and rolls him up in a rug. She trains him to unroll himself and run for help. The kid is told he will be taken outside by old Nick, where he will meet real people who he has to ask for help. He is scared but agrees to do it. When old Nick arrives a while later, Joy has already wrapped up Jack inside the rug and is pretending to cry. She claims that he died during the night and blames old Nick for his death. Nick panics and quickly brings the kid out, still rolled up in the rug. He puts him onto the back of a pickup truck and drives off. From inside the rug, Jack feels the truck driving. He unravels the rug and is mesmerized to see the full view of the sky for the first time. When the truck slows down, he carefully jumps out of it. Old Nick notices and stops the truck, but by then, Jack has already met a man walking his dog. Old Nick tries to bring Jack back to the vehicle, but the man finds it suspicious and threatens to call the police. Old Nick drives away after leaving the kid lying on the ground. Jack stays there until he is rescued by the police. He tells them about his mother and shows them the tooth he has of hers. When he mentions that they live in a shed that they aren't allowed to leave, the police realize the severity of the situation. They quickly call for backup and start searching for the shed. Only a few hours later, they rescue Joy, who is fortunately safe. She reunites with her son and praises him for his work. The two hug, celebrating their freedom after being captured for seven years. When Jack wakes up the next day, he finds himself in a bed in a hospital room. He looks outside the window, still unable to believe that the outside world is real. Joy and him take a bath in a shower for the first time. Jack is scared to go under running water, but eventually gets used to it. The doctors perform several tests on them and declare them healthy. They are recommended to wear a lot of sunscreen since they were hardly exposed to sunlight in captivity. Jack is also told to wear sunglasses if the world seems too bright. The kid is nervous to talk to the doctor, so he quietly whispers to Joy if he wants to say something. Joy's parents, Nancy and Robert, finally arrive at the hospital and embrace their long-lost daughter in a tight hug. They had accepted she was never going to return after suddenly disappearing one day. Joy is told that her parents have divorced and her mother is now dating a man named Leo. Following that, Joy and Jack are taken home, where a crowd of people and reporters have gathered to witness the return. Jack needs help to walk down the stairs because he is not used to it. He meets Leo, who is delighted to see both of them. After they are settled, Nancy comments that they should cut Jack's hair, but the kid quietly whispers that his strength is in his hair. At dinner, the family enjoys a nutritious meal that is foreign to Jack. He eats ice cream for the first time and experiences a brain freeze. Oof, maybe life was better in the room. Joy notices that her father hasn't talked to Jack at all. She realizes that he is not comfortable with Jack being his grandchild because he was the product of her being sexually assaulted. Enraged that he is not willing to accept her son, she gets into an argument with him and storms off to her room with Jack. The following day, Joy shows Jack a picture of her and her high school friends. She is clearly annoyed at the fact that their lives turned out to be nice while she was rotting in that hell of a room. Jack has a hard time adjusting to the new life. He never leaves his mother's side and doesn't talk to anyone else. Leo makes the kid comfortable and talks to him like a father, which helps him a lot. Joy falls deep into depression after failing to be happy even after getting out of captivity. 
She forces Jack to play, even when he refuses to, and gets into a huge argument with her mother. Some days later, their family's lawyer informs them that they will need money for the upcoming trial, and the easiest way to get some is to do a primetime interview. A journalist shows up at the house to interview Joy. She asks her intrusive questions about self-harm and her relationship with the captor, making her feel worse than she already did. At one point in the interview, Joy is asked why she didn't beg the abductor to leave Jack in an orphanage, implying that she was selfish. The interviewer has upset her so much that she sinks into depression. The next morning, Jack walks to the bathroom and is horrified to see his mother laying on the ground. But she is soon saved by the paramedics. While Joy is admitted to the hospital, Jack is left alone with Nancy and Leo. With time, he begins opening up to them and gets used to being around people. Leo brings his dog home, which excites Jack, who still remembers his imaginary dog, Lucky. One day, Jack tells Nancy he wants to cut his hair and send it to Joy because she needs his strength more than he does. Nancy happily does as he says and gives the boy a neat haircut. At the end of it, the kid tells her that he loves her. Nancy is overwhelmed and hardly manages to whisper back, I love you too. That day, a neighbor's kid calls Jack out to play. He makes a friend for the first time in his life and plays with him in the backyard. At the same time, Joy returns home and smiles watching him play. When the mother and the son meet, she claims that his hair helped her get well quickly. As time passes, Jack experiences several things with his mother. They go to different restaurants, parks, and places that they didn't get to visit for all those years. They also hang a hammock at the house that Jack has always wanted to play in. As the two are swinging in it, Jack asks to visit the room. Joy is shocked by the request, but she agrees to take him for a visit. When Jack returns to the place, he comments that it has shrunk since they were last here because he remembers it being bigger. Before leaving, he wishes the objects in the room a goodbye like he used to wish them while in captivity. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.